Hello everyone, welcome to Zur. Week number nine. At your new one hour earlier time, because of daylight savings, I'm stuck in a bush. He is on Nessus, back in that big old tree, just like week one. We're gonna go check out the Helmapalooza he's got going on. A lot of, a lot of helms this week. So uh, let's go, let's go see what he's got. My will is not my own, is yours. No, it's not. The weapon of the week is the Prospector Grenade Launcher, allowing you to toss out up to eight grenades at full auto speed and then detonating them all at the same time, which is a pretty cool effect. Allows you to solo the Watchers in the Leviathan or at least have a much easier time doing them. As a grenade launcher, this thing is pretty cool. A lot of firepower behind it. Good for clearing out very tightly packed groups of enemies. You know, stuff that grenade launchers do. People don't think very highly of grenade launchers at the moment, though. They're not as strong in the DPS department compared to other guns. And it takes a fair amount of ammo to really lay a hurting on something. Along with a little bit of setup if you basically want to lay a trap for spawning enemies. I think Wardcliffe Coil... Does that sort of AoE effect pretty well already, and also does single target pretty well as well. This is not something that you need to rush out to buy, but I don't think it's a terrible investment. I think I'm dying. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably dead. Hunters. You're getting Foe Tracer for the third time. The perk allows you to track targets for a short time. And you deal more damage to them when they are low health. The damage bonus starts around, I think, 25% of an enemy's health. So for regular red bar PvE enemies, you're going to see close to no benefit at all. And then the benefit grows with larger health pools. This makes it not bad for bosses or very high health targets. Although that being said, the subclass specific exotics are really hard to pass on. Where this is going to shine is in PvP, with tracking being a very valuable tool. The damage bonus on low health targets could also help you seal the deal one shot faster than normal, probably most notably with scout rifles, with most of them killing in the 4-5 to five shot range. Maybe you get a 4 shot instead of a 5 on someone who has slightly higher resilience. It's a neutral exotic and combine it with something like Mida, and you are going to see everything, everything on the battlefield. Solid, solid recommendation from me. Titans, you are getting the insurmountable, insurmountable skull fort. Melee kills will fully restore your melee energy and give you health, with arc melees, to be specific. The main appeal of this helm isn't even that perk, though, in my opinion. No, the main appeal is that with the top striker block of perks, where melee hits with shoulder charge regenerate grenade energy based on number of targets hit, you get a ton of grenade energy. Pulse grenades are insanely good right now. So combine all of the above, and you get a lot of grenade damage potential when you get a kill. When you're not getting a kill, or when you're not focusing on getting kills, or just tagging a bunch of enemies, you're going to lose some value there. Tagging a bunch of enemies is great, but the whole point of this helm is to have your shoulder charge active as much as possible, or your melee cooldown as active as much as possible. Now, the harder the enemies, the tougher it is to make this work. Prestige activities leave you very vulnerable, so you'll need to weaken enemies ahead of time, but other activities aren't as strict. As long as pulse grenades are strong, this helm is going to be useful. As long as Striker Titan is strong, this helm is going to be useful. Even then, flashbang grenades are pretty darn useful in PvE as well and are basically going to be pulse grenades replacement if they ever get nerfed. Super, super hard. Another definite recommendation for me. Warlocks. You are getting Eye of Another World. The main perk gives you reduced cooldowns in general, and it highlights priority targets. I really like the, the highlighting priority targets for some reason. I don't know why. I just kind of do. It's, it's just something nice to have 
you never really think about it, but every once in a while it just feels like it comes in handy. I don't know. But let's talk about the cooldown reduction. It's one grenade, one melee, and one class ability mod all combined into one. And that's the perk. That's it. It's pretty uneventful. But it is very nice for PvP, though. You don't have to worry about proccing any exotic abilities or anything. It just passively works in the background, which is very handy. In PvE, there are better options out there simply because it's a lot easier to kill stuff in PvE. It's much easier to proc those things in general. But if you really just want to be super lazy, then I guess this is all right. But in PvP, where you're not getting as many kills or as many opportunities to proc those other effects, this is a little bit nicer. That is going to do it for Zura week number nine. In case you have not heard, Destiny Reset, Ritual Destiny Reset, is moving eight hours ahead of whatever time it normally is for you. So for me, right now, Reset is at 1 a.m. That's going to be moving to 9 a.m. This change will be happening when Curse of Osiris launches on December 5th, which is less than a month away. And I could not be happier about that change. Oh my god, I love it. That does mean that Zer videos are going to be moving to 8 hours later in the day though. Along with any other reset stuff that I might be doing. So yeah, that's just a little, uh, little heads up for that. I'm going to go to bed one hour earlier than usual. Hooray. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a great weekend. And I will see you all next time.